Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is a good day and a new day, the first day of the rest of your life. And before, therefore, you get into the world with all its activities for the glory of God, let us first listen to the voice of God through this meditation. Today's meditation is taken <clears throat> from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 9. Jesus introduced a new method of teaching. He started using parables to teach them wonderful spiritual truth. The parable for today's meditation is from this passage. Um, this is one of the first parables Jesus used to teach a um, wonderful lesson. This is the parable of a farmer sowing the seed. There are at least two lessons to be learned. Before I get into these lessons, I want to give you a warning. Give a warning to all the listeners of this meditation. These days you hear about sowing the seed into the ministries of uh, certain ministry ministers. Some modern uh, preachers called prosperity and new generation preachers. They use this parable to extract as much money as possible from their followers. They deceive people who have no biblical foundations and collect crores of rupees and dollars by urging them to sow their seed, meaning their money, into their ministries. This sowing will bring about a great harvest of wealth and prosperity in your life. And I warn you not to be deceived. It is unbiblical. The Bible never taught us to sow money into the ministries of these ministers. The only seed the Bible teaches us to sow is the seed of God's word, the gospel. And that is the only seed that the Bible talks about that we are to sow. Now let us get into the parable. Two great lessons we can learn from this parable. Lesson number one, the lesson of sowing the seed. A genuine believer is to sow the seed. In verse 14, Jesus himself gives us the interpretation as to what the seed means. It means the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever he may be, a believer follower of Jesus Christ is to preach the word. No one is to be exempted. And wherever he may be. In the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 4 gives us the best example. In this passage, uh, there arose a big persecution uh, of the believers. And the Bible says there, except for the apostles, the believers were all scattered into different cities and neighboring countries. And the Bible, that, that same passage says, wherever they went, they preached the word. In other words, they sowed the seed. And that is how, in the first century, the gospel began to spread and increase. And they preached the believers. No matter the difficulties, the oppositions, and the persecutions, and the discouragement, our greatest example is Jesus Christ himself. When Jesus stood before the people, he knew the 
kind of people or the type of people who were seated in front of him. He knew the hard, stony, closed-hearted uh, uh, religious leaders. He knew the shallow, deceptive um, enthusiasm of the poor and the needy. And he knew the world, worldliness of a rich and well-to-do people and how they were entangled in the pleasures of this world. He knew some would never listen. He also knew something else, that if he continued to sow the seed, some would surely bring forth fruit. Some soil would be uh, craving for the truth of life and eternity. Therefore, they would hear, accept, and bear fruit. This is the reason Jesus continued. He kept on sowing the seed, the word of God, giving himself uh, without uh, and he is sowing never giving himself to discouragement and disappointment sowing that some might be saved and in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 22 apostle paul said it was his desire to identify himself with the people of the city or country wherever he, he went so he said, to the weak I become like weak, to the strong I became strong, to the rich I became like rich, to the poor I became like poor. In other words, he is saying, I identified with the people of the place I went that I may win some for the kingdom of God. Why we must continue to preach? Why our churches and denominations must engage in mission, meaning preaching the gospel to the unreached people? And why we must continue to do so? Every disciple of Christ must continue to preach, never mind the result. Because if you claim that Jesus Christ is alive in you, then that makes you a missionary. Remember, if you do not have the Spirit of Christ who lives in you, what is the Spirit of Christ? It is the Spirit of reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was the Spirit. His burden was people. His passion was people. And he would take any inconvenient uh, con uh, methods uh, in order to reach someone who needs to be brought into the kingdom of God. The Samaritan woman. And do you think he took the long route on his way to Jerusalem uh, simply to meet her? No. He knew one truth. If he could reach this woman who was a rejected, despised woman of that uh, city, he could win that city itself. And that's what exactly happened. And my friends, we need to look at the larger picture of God's plan. And that will help us to encourage ourselves to continue to preach the gospel and sow the seed. We must not stop, no matter the discouragement and opposition. Some hearts are ready. They are fertile, plowed, ready to receive the seed and to bear fruit. And that is why we should never stop preaching the gospel, the pure unadulterated, uncompromising gospel given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And my brothers and sisters, 
if you are a child of God, if you claim that Jesus is alive in you, and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are to be a missionary. Necessarily, you are to be a missionary. Because that is the spirit of Christ. And that is the uh, vision of Christ, souls. And we must be prepared to pay any price in order to bring souls into the kingdom of God. And always remember, it, it doesn't matter what inconveniences are before you, what uh, stumbling blocks you face. And we are conquerors, remember that. We need to conquer all the stumbling blocks and go forward that somehow you may win some people and bring them into the kingdom of God. So that when you are with Jesus, when he comes, you will not be empty handed, but there will be some to stand up and say, because of so and so, I am in the kingdom of God. Let it be your testimony. God bless you as you give yourself to preaching the word and sowing the seed. Remember, we considered only one lesson of the two. We will continue it tomorrow. And meanwhile, this is a great day. Have a nice and wonderful, fruitful day today. Look out for opportunities to share Jesus with somebody. And God will use you. God bless you as you love the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for speaking to us today of the necessity of continuing to sow the seed of your gospel, that somehow we may win some people and bring them into the kingdom of God. Thank you for using us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.